Hello and welcome to Worship with Community United Methodist Church. I'm Carrie Binney, I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad to welcome you to worship with us today. If this is your first time in particular, we want to offer you a special welcome. We hope you'll continue to join us online, and as we get closer and closer to worshiping together in our building, we hope you'll be able to join us then as well. But before then, we are going to be having three different drive-in worship service opportunities that we would love to have you come to. The first will be on our kickoff Sunday, September 13th at 10 a.m. in the church parking lot. Then two weeks later, on the 27th of September, we will be having Confirmation Sunday, again a drive-in service to honor the students whose confirmation didn't happen last spring and has now been postponed and shifted to this fall. And then two weeks after that, on October 11th, we will be having Bible Sunday for all students and children who will be receiving new Bibles. So it's going to be a great time, each of those services. Different people will be recognized and celebrated, and the best part is we'll get to see one another again. So do please mark your calendars and join us that day for the drive-in worship service. But again, welcome. Thank you for being a part of our faith community today. Know that we would love to be your church family, and I would be honored to be your pastor. And so if this is your first time joining us, or you've been with us for years and years and years, we're glad that you're here. Each and every one of you makes us Community United Methodist Church. One other quick announcement that I wanted to share with you today is that signups are now available on our website to sign up for the next round of life groups or small groups. We will be beginning an all-church study in September, right after that first uh, kickoff Sunday service. And so we would love to get you to sign up to participate in life groups on Zoom. Some groups may choose to meet together um, outdoors in person, uh, someplace in the community, but for the most part, we're anticipating Zoom gatherings. If you'd like to try, but you're not quite sure how to get yourself situated on Zoom, we have people who would love to walk you through it. We want to make sure that you're able to be connected, to stay involved, and to be a part of this, this wonderful spiritual growth opportunity. We're going to be reading the book called Grateful by Diana Butler Bass, and I think it'll be a wonderful opportunity for us to dig deeper in faith and reconnect with one another. Having said all of that, I think we are ready to begin our time of worship together. So I would invite you now to join me as we pray our breakthrough prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of young people. You've given them energy, joy, insights, questions, and love to share in ways that other generations can't. So open my eyes and my heart to see them and value their contributions to the world. Use Community United Methodist Church, and that means me, to offer them care and compassion. Help us to be the village they need for support and spiritual growth. Prompt me to identify, validate, and cheer on the potential you've placed within each and every one of them. This I pray in the name of Jesus, who drew the children to his side. Amen. Hello, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I am so glad that each of you has decided to commit to Community United Methodist Church and, and make us your church home and your church family. As I say at the start of every worship service, we want to be your church family and I want to be your pastor. And so we, I am delighted and on behalf of the whole church, um, just so enthused to welcome you into the membership of the church tonight. So thank you for saying yes. Um, let's just get started by, maybe we can go around the squares here uh, and and share your names and maybe a little something about yourself. Perhaps if you're employed, what that is, or a hobby you have, that kind of thing. So let's start with uh, Cindy and Lyle. Okay. I'm Cindy Hillbrands, and um, I enjoy sewing. I guess that's a lot what I do during my, my days other than the usual stuff. Um, and we are transferring from Messiah United Methodist Church in Plymouth. We were members there for 49 years. <laughs> So this is a big thing for us. Um, and let's see, we have two kids. Um, Michelle and her family live in Rockford. And our son, Brent, uh, he died actually 20 years ago today, on August 30th. So that's a, it's a hard day for us um, on Sunday. But we are looking forward to being members of community and getting involved. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm Lyle Hillbranch, and uh, I was a machinist as a uh, uh, 
as when I was working and I have a little shop here. I'm retired now, but I'm, I have a small shop and I still do some machining and uh, make a few things that don't work. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, we, I uh, am glad to join this church and uh, looking forward to it. Thank you. Excellent. Well, we are delighted to have you join in the membership of the church. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's move next to Danny and Gatlin. Yeah, hi, so I'm Danny Norgren. Um, I, we have a six month old daughter named Harper, um, who that's pretty much what we spend our evenings dealing with since she's crawling now. Um, but during the daytime, I am a children and families mental health therapist. All right, um, I'm Gatlin Norgren and um, for occupation, I guess I'm a carpenter, I build houses. Um, and for fun, I like to, um, I'm into dirt bikes and motorcycles and hunting. And, um, we also have a dog named Sprocket. <laughs> Can't forget about her. But, uh, uh yeah, we're very excited to uh, become members of the church and, um, look forward to, um, meeting new people and being part of a community. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. And to the house household. Hi, uh, my name is Gina Houts, and this is my husband, Michael. Uh, we just got married in October, so we're still in that uh, newlywed honeymoon phase. <laughs> um, but during the day, I am a facilities coordinator for the St. Michael Public School District, so I work in the community education department. Um, we have one very needy cat who refuses to get off of our lap. <laughs> um, recently have four backyard chickens, and for fun, I like to read and just hang out on our back deck. I'm Michael Houts. Um, yeah, I, Carrie got to be the person that married us, which was awesome. We were thrilled. It was a perfect ceremony. Um, and I work a lot of weekends, so during the week, I'm hanging out, taking care of the chickens and apparently the cat, and waiting for Gina to get home. <laughs> so that's us. Awesome. That's great. Well, we are, like I said before, delighted to have you all becoming a part of, of the church. And it is, an, it is a true honor to be your pastor. And Ian, when the opportunity is there to, to marry you. I mean, it's, it's great. Um, <laughs> as, as I mentioned to you previously, what we do for the membership time in the church is we just kind of review the membership vows that we ask people to take on as goals for their lives. And so I will ask you collectively um, about the prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. So first we ask, will you pray for Community United Methodist Church, knowing that we are praying for each of you in return? If so, please say, I will. Well, I will. I will. I will. There you go. Last but not least. Um, the next is presence. Will you be present to your faith? Which means uh, participating in Sunday worship, unless you're sick or out of town, although Sunday is now kind of relative when it's the online experience. We ask you to <laughs> um, you know, find a time each week to engage in worship, but also to be present to your faith in other ways as well, like being in a life group or doing a Bible study or even a daily devotional, regular prayer routine, something like that that'll keep you grounded in your faith. If you will, please say, I will. I will. Well. Well. All right. Uh, the next is gifts. Will you give of your financial resources and the other gifts that you have to give to the church, um, growing toward and even ideally someday exceeding the tithe? If so, please say, I will. Well. I will. I will. Well. Excellent. And the next is service. Will you serve in the name of Jesus to better the community, both within the walls of the church and beyond our walls? If so, please say, I will. Oh. I will. No. And lastly, uh, witness. Is, you, I don't, do you hear my kids screaming? On the, <laughs> I hear them, but I, ah, can't edit that part out. Um, the last is uh, witness. Will you be a witness to your faith? Will you tell other people about your faith? Maybe invite them to church or to a church event, something that will help to communicate your commitment to follow God and be a, a dedicated Christian in the world. If so, please say, I will. I will. I will. All right. Well, normally the church is there to repeat back some things to you. Um, and while they are not here right now, I know that when they watch this on Sunday, they are going to be enthused um, and as excited as I am to welcome you into this community of faith. So on behalf of all of them, 
thank you, as I said before, for saying yes. And um, again, it's a real honor to be a part of your church family. Thank you. Will you join us in our first hymn this morning? Here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will see. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. pause for a moment and pray today, offering ourselves up to God. Lord, let those words that we just sang 
penetrate our hearts. What exactly it is we are offering at this time is this, if you long to do a work and we can be used to accomplish it, Lord, send us. Lord, help us to be instruments of your love. Help us to to be a part of your redemption story in other people's lives. Help us to pass on joy and peace and love wherever we go. Help us to be a part of that solution to whatever else is going on right now. Lord, most of all, give us ears to hear you, eyes to see you, and a mind to conceive what you'd have us conceive. Amen. At a loss for words And the funny thing is It's okay The last thing I need Is to be hurt But to hear What you say Word of God speak what you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness, word of God speak. In the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, all that I need is to be with you and in the quiet, hear your voice, word of God speak. To pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay in rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. Watching my eyes to see your majesty Be still to know that you're in this place Please let me stay and rest in your holiness Word of God speak At a loss for words And the funny thing is It's okay Hello, my name is Noah for those who don't know me And our scripture lesson today comes from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, the message translation. The disciples started arguing uh, over which of them would be the most famous. When Jesus realized how much this mattered to them, he brought a child to his side. Whoever accepts this child as if the child were me, accepts me, he said. And whoever accepts me, accepts the one who sent me. You become... Great by accepting. 
not asserting your spirit. Your spirit, not your size, makes the difference. May God add a blessing to the hearing, reading, and understanding of the scripture. We all want the best for our children. That's one thing that every parent has in common. Not too long ago, I got a message on Facebook from somebody in our community asking for assistance from our church. I wrote back and I said, well, I'm actually on vacation. Um, maybe we can help you on Monday when the office reopens. And the individual, this woman said, well, actually, my son needs to be removed from my home. And if I don't find an alternative place for him to live, he'll be placed in foster care. She said, I'm, I'm hoping the church can help us out. Now, this is a woman who has been involved with our community some in the last year or so. We wanted, I wanted to help her. I wasn't quite sure how we could do that because she needed help right away. But maybe you saw it. If, you're on the, if you received the All Church emails, I pushed out an email that said, is there anyone who can help? Who can house this, this young boy, an elementary school student? I was amazed. Community United Methodist Church, you stepped up by stepping forward. There were five of you, or five households, who all responded saying, I'd like to help in some way. And while it took a little bit of time to kind of get a schedule worked out and a plan in place, there were two households that were able to follow the timeline that we put together and meet the needs of this young boy's mother. And so Michelle Voller and her husband stepped up and they offered to take the young boy and, and care for him. Took him shopping, got him some clothes, took him to the beach. He was their overnight guest. And then a couple days later, Jackie Gordon also had this young boy at her home and showed him hospitality and care and welcome. This is one of those moments when I just feel so proud to be the pastor of this church. Because once again, people have stepped up to say, we care. We are the church who says yes to loving and feeding our community in body and spirit. That is our vision after all. And Michelle and Jackie are just two examples of people who take that belief, that vision, and realize it in our midst. As I said before, there were a few others of you who also stepped up and offered your homes or your help in some way. You're amazing. Maybe it's that desire to help someone in need. Maybe it's a shared passion for helping kids. Either way, we were able to help this woman and her child, this family, as a church, and I'm so grateful. There are a number of other ways that we all need a little help and support in raising children. Last week, we began this sermon series called It Takes a Village, based off of the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. And we talked about some things that maybe families can do, maybe parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, neighbors, friends, to help raise children in the faith, to model behavior for them that will hopefully encourage a lifetime of belief in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, today we want to continue that, but we're going to look at things from a little bit of a different angle. Today we're going to talk about the church and what our role is. If you recall, when we, have, when we celebrate baptisms here in church and worship, the community comes alongside, granted they stay in their seats, but they come alongside to support the parent or parents who are bringing a child before the congregation. You see, a baptism is the community, a parent or parents, yes, to what God is already doing in their midst. God has already helped to be a part of creating this beautiful child. God already wants to be a part of their lives. And so baptism gives parents the opportunity to say yes back to God. Yes, we want to raise our child in the faith. Yes, we want our child to know you the way we do. But one of my favorite things about baptism, other than holding the babies and walking them around, because I do love that part, one of my other favorite parts is when the congregation gets to respond together and say, we too want to be a part of this process. We too 
care about this child, even if this is the first time we're seeing this child. Because we too believe that a community is essential in raising young people in faith. Like I said, Michelle and Jackie offer a great example of the kind of things we can do. But they're not the only ones. I asked my son Noah today, I said, when you think about church, and I realize it's been a few months since we've all gathered together collectively, but when you think about the congregation, are there any certain memories that come to mind or certain people that you can picture in your mind when I ask you, when have you felt loved, supported, encouraged, like people care about you? And he basically said, well, where do I start? Which is exactly what I was hoping to hear. The first person he named actually was his dad. He said, well, daddy, because he comes every Sunday to Sunday school. He cares so much about me and about the other kids that he wants us to learn about Jesus. And then he said, don't worry, mama, I learn about Jesus from you too, which is always good to hear. But he said, I think that's pretty neat that daddy cares that much about the kids. I said, who else? Who, who else who is not in our family? And he said, well, definitely Kevin and Mary Jo Jepson. You see, Mary Jo always kind of scoots over and makes a little spot for my boys to slide in when they get to worship. They love to sit with her, talk to her, probably distract her a little bit. But she's always there to welcome them. Noah said, they kind of feel like they're another set of grandparents to me. I feel like they love me like I'm their grandchild. How special is that? To find people in your church that can make your own child feel like they're their own grandchildren? That is a gift that I will be forever grateful for. Not only that, Kevin and Mary Jo love Disney World and so do my boys. And so for months in preparation before my family went on our trip to Disney World over a year ago, Noah would come up to Kevin, I think Nathan did too, and ask for a new Disney trivia fact. Kevin confessed to me that he had been spending Saturday nights doing research so that he could come up with a new fun fact about Disney World to share with the boys. One Saturday, Mary Jo closed her book and said, I've had it, that's it, we're booking a trip ourselves, I gotta get back there. You see, the people at church, you can have a spiritual connection with, but you can also connect with on other levels. When we have people that surround us and support us, that we can connect with on many levels, we have a caring community, people that we can trust. And my hope is that we would all have people in the congregation like that. And certainly, Kevin and Mary Jo are not the only ones like that for my kids either. In fact, I even heard Mary Jo say once how grateful she was to the men, primarily, who were volunteering at the middle school for a number of years as greeters, welcoming students, visitors, staff to the building, kind of schmoozing, talking, if you're Dave Hansen, walking around quite a bit. But she said that when Caden got to middle school, her grandson, he was so relieved that first day to see a welcoming grandpa from our congregation. I have to think it probably helped him to breathe a little bit deeper, knowing that there was somebody there with a familiar face that he could trust. This is what it means to be a church family, to surround one another in all areas of our lives, and to be there in love and support. It's important to have parents who raise us in the faith. That was kind of the primary point last week. But it's also important to have an extended community. In the book Sticky Faith that I've been reading, and I talked about a little bit last week, they talk about the importance of having a good ratio of adults to young people. One of the authors says that a lot of youth ministries kind of think of a, a one to five ratio. One adult leader for every five youth is ideal. But they suggest, what if we flip it around for our own children or for the children in the church? And we try to find a five to one ratio for every child. Five adults who genuinely care about them. 
Wouldn't that be amazing? Now, they don't all have to be within a church. Oftentimes, young people will find a mentor, a teacher, a coach, someone else who cares deeply about them, who they can trust. But my challenge to us, Community United Methodist Church, is can we commit to being, to offering a five-to-one ratio to all of the families who walk through these doors so that they, the children who grow up in this congregation can feel loved and supported and known. Research shows that young people who've gone off to college, maybe gone off to pursue a career right after high school, either way, the ones who are more likely to go back to church were the ones who had connections with older adults in the congregation. In fact, people are three times more likely to stay connected with their faith when they go off to college, if within the first semester of their being there, somebody from the church outside of the youth group and the staff reaches out to them. A care package, a letter, an email, a phone call. If just one person in a church congregation responds, they're that much more likely to stay connected to the faith. We can do that. We can do that. We can be a church who says yes to supporting our young people. We can do that also by staying right here, by offering to help teach Sunday school, by serving as a confirmation mentor. In fact, I could use a couple more if you're feeling at all nudged. Listen to the Spirit's presence in your life today. If you're feeling nudged to volunteer in that way or in another way, please listen and respond. You have a chance to make a difference in the life of a young person, if not several. It matters. It also matters to have children in worship. And I realize that right now everything's digital, but when we come back, there are a lot of things that will be vying for our time and attention. Whether it's a few extra hours of sleep, or a sports commitment, or uh, some kind of a tournament, or a contest, Maybe it's you share custody with your kid and you don't have them that week. It, it's never going to be perfect. But the more we can have our kids in worship, the more likely they are to maintain and hold on to and not shelve their faith when they leave the nest, so to speak. This is probably similar then to kind of like a kid's table mentality. Stay with me here for a moment. If you remember growing up, and so often if there were family events or if maybe it was even social events with friends, adults would be at one table and then kids were at the kids' table. And oftentimes people like that split because then you can have the conversations that are, you know, more geared toward your interest level. I would tend to think that the uh, environment at the kids' table could de-escalate rather quickly, but for a few moments at least, People are having social interactions and conversations with their peers. And that's great. However, when that's how we treat worship, like at the adult table, and the kids don't come, they're going to be much less likely to want to return to a church later or to be connected with one after they leave their homes, their homes of, up, of their places of upbringing. Part of this is because, say you've, been somebody who is volunteering regularly teaching Sunday school, or maybe you've been coming to youth group, but then you go off to college and you look for a church, it's going to feel harder to stay connected because you've been used to the kids' table. You've been doing youth group. You haven't been experiencing worship. There's a disconnect sometimes. So the more we can encourage children and youth in our worship services, participating in them, but also greeting them afterwards, talking to them beforehand, making them feel genuinely welcomed, they're going to be more apt to stay or more apt to stay present to their own faith if they move on to a different phase of life. These things matter. As I said before, coaches do, teachers do, Sunday school teachers do, everybody can help shape the life of a young person. And even if there's a child and a parent who are really close, that, that child still needs other adult influences, other people they can trust. 
sometimes other people can just say it in a way that mom or dad can't, as much as mom or dad might want to. Someday I'll need to rely on you to be the confirmation mentors for my kids. Because there will be some things that they just need to talk to somebody else about. Tony Dungy tells a story, actually, about a time when his son was playing high school football. And every morning before school, his son would grab a Pop-Tart and go, and, and Tony would say, no, you, you got to have a bigger breakfast. you got a big practice, multi-hour practice today, a game at the end of the week, or whatever the case may be. You need to have enough energy. Start your day fueled, right? And his son would say, yeah, whatever, and take his Pop-Tart and walk out the door. Well, one morning, he said, things were a little different. His son kind of groggily walked into the kitchen and started preparing eggs and bacon, and Tony kind of smiled to himself, and he said, I'm glad you finally decided to, to take the advice and have a good breakfast. And his son said, yeah, coach told me I should, so I am. Well, the irony of that is that Tony Dungy is one of the best NFL coaches. And so the fact that his own son couldn't hear that from him, he had to hear it from his own coach, is somewhat interesting. Kind of makes you chuckle, but it's true. It's really reminiscent of the rest of life and including a life of faith. Young people need adults to model for them faithful behaviors. They need to hear older adults talk about their faith. And most importantly, they need to be accepted for who they are because of whose they are. In Scripture, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, we read about Samuel being, studying and living in the temple with, under the care of the priest named Eli. You see, Samuel's mother, Hannah, had been praying for a child, for she had been previously thought to be barren. Once the child arrived, then she nursed the child, and when he was weaned, she brought him to the temple and gave him over in service to the Lord. Eli then became essentially kind of a parent and mentor. But the interesting thing is, a little bit later on in, in this third chapter of 1 Samuel, we read that Eli's own sons have been terrors. They have been um, not acting appropriately. They have been not accepting people's offerings to the temple in appropriate ways. They've been pushing back on boundaries. They've been living in ways that would be very, very disturbing to their parent, Eli. Yet Eli made a huge difference in the life of Samuel. Where he struggled with disciplining his own children, he was able to help discipline and raise Samuel in such a way that was so powerful. A few minutes ago, you heard Noah read the scripture passage for today from Luke, from Luke's gospel, where Jesus is talking to his disciples. You see, they had gotten a little bit Oh, they lost their focus. That was known to happen from time to time. They started arguing about who among us is the greatest. Jesus needed to stop it right away. So what did he do? He gave them a comparison. He drew a child to his side and he said, you need to be able to welcome me the way you welcome this young child. When you can welcome me and your neighbor and one another the way you would welcome a young child, then you will truly be great. Now we might think, okay, but back then that was pretty provocative. You see, back then, children were, well, it was more of that seen but not heard thing. Children were not really respected all that much. They didn't, it wasn't believed that they had a very intrinsic value in them that they were just part of society, but not an important part of it. So Jesus, instead, uses a word, the Greek verb for welcome, which is dekomai. He uses that word, and, which is often translated um, to mean showing hospitality to guests. Jesus said, you need to show hospitality to guests. You need to have that kind of a vibe, that kind of an ethos, in order to be great. Now the reason why that in particular is provocative is because who would normally address guests in a home? Who would normally offer the hospitality and the welcome? It would be the servants. 
It would be the people who are deemed in part of a lower class. Now, granted, not every home had servants, but the desired status that people wanted would have been that. And so if these people had been arguing over what's greatest, what's the best, they probably were already envisioning themselves in kind of an upper echelon. But Jesus is saying, slow your roll. You must be like a servant. You must offer hospitality and welcome. But more than that, you must offer it to all people, regardless of their age, their size, their gender, anything. If you can welcome me and one another and a young child, you are truly great. So Community United Methodist Church, do you want to be truly great? Do you want to make a difference in shaping and changing the lives of the young people in our midst? There is no silver bullet. There's no one way to do it. There's no perfect recipe that will ensure and guarantee that every youth who goes through this church will leave and, and just be on fire for Jesus for all of their lives. Oh man, I wish there was. But God has given us all that we need. God has placed within us hearts with compassion and love for all of God's children. God has given us resources, financial, but also resources of time, of expertise. We can make a difference. We can be the church who says yes to loving and feeding God's community in body and spirit, which includes even the littlest among us. May it be so. Amen. I think you need to stand up at home for this one. So we're going to sing Stand in Your Love. tries to roll over my bones and sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken let's do it again when darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance Power that can save 
we go forward this week let's keep in mind our scripture passage for today let's welcome the children in our midst let's draw them to our side let's care for them reach out to them when they're in college make a space for them in the pew next to us when we're back in worship together and if you as a parent aren't quite sure how to begin developing that five to one ratio in your children's lives I'm sure there are a lot of people here who would be happy to volunteer to step up. In addition, you might even want to ask your child, who are five people in the church that you really like and respect? The names they give you might be a great place to start. Feel free to reach out to one another. To reach out to me, I can try to help make those connections and say, you were named by my child as someone that they like and respect in the church someone they feel comfortable with? Would you be willing to be a part of their five to one? We can make a difference. We can do it here and we can do it beyond these walls. Let's be the church that says yes. Amen and alleluia. When darkness tries to roll over my bones Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Let's do it again When darkness tries to roll over my bones Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance. Go. 
off every chain There's power that can empty out a grave There's resurrection power that can Chance when I step in your love, my fear doesn't. 